Welcome to my channel, where I go and actually give you my recommendations on new streaming content. So today, for the comedy series Churchy on BET+, four main target audience members, people that are fans of Kev on Stage, or church comedies, clean comedies, or just in general, that new vibe type of stuff, I'm going to go ahead and actually recommend that you watch the entire first season. For casual viewers, you're not really into comedies that much, or you're not really that vibing with, you don't know who Kev on stage is, you don't know anything, you don't like clean comedy or anything like that, I'm going to go and actually recommend that you give a two-episode watch. So those are my recommendations for Churchy. Now, stay tuned, and I'll go ahead and actually review and break down why I gave it those recommendations. Some drum rolls in the comments right now. God is moving me in my ministry to love it, Texas. Looks like he figured it out. I give it a month. You it, man. Churchy is a comedy series that premiered in February of 2024 on BET+. Now, there's eight episodes in the first season. Each episode is running roughly about 25 minutes apiece. Now, it stars Kevin Fredericks as Corey Carr Jr. and Mark Hood as Rodney Joseph. So, here is the series synopsis. After being bypassed for leadership of his father's megachurch, Corey Carr Jr. moves to rural Texas to prove that he can build his own ministry from the ground up. So that's what we go ahead and actually have for this series. And for here, I'm going to go and actually let you know, this series is actually the brainchild of uh, Kevin Fredericks, better known as the comedian Kev on stage. He's a social media and stand-up comedian that is all over various different platforms, Facebook, X, YouTube, all that kind of good stuff. And he has some hilarious material. Now, to be honest, my perspective on this is I'm a main target audience member. I'm a fan of his. He's got that clean content. He's got the jokes about fatherhood, marriage, growing up in the church, and just the general perception on life and of the culture. And if you know, you know. So I'm definitely a target member audience for this particular series. The reason why I give you that is I think you should always know what perspective your reviewer has when giving you their feedback and their opinion on a series. So I like to watch the first two episodes of brand new content on streaming platforms to let you know if they're worth your time. I watch it so you don't have to. If you like how that sounds, do me a favor, click like, share, subscribe. And now let me dive into this review for Churchy. So for me, after watching the first two episodes of Churchy, I really, it's its definitely its own thing, right? But if I'm going to go and actually give you some type of comparison, I would go and actually liken it to a very modern, fresh take on the series from the 80s called A-Man, which starred Sherman Helmsley. And so this is going to have a modern take on it with its own wrinkle on it, and it has its own feel for it, right? So that's where I give the comparisons. So within the first two episodes of this particular series, uh, let me just give you some of my thoughts initially that I that I kind of uh, thought of and wrote down. Uh, so first and foremost, I like how they kind of get into the premises right off. The very first scene and the very first episode, you get the premise of what this show is about. You know what's going on and boom, you're off to the races. They're not kind of dragging it out of kind of like somehow some pilots do and things like that. You know exactly what's going on and they get right to it. It's awesome. There's also a scene in the restaurant in the first episode that has uh tabitha brown if you know anything about uh social media and healthy living and lifestyles and positivity whatever tabitha brown is an amazing person and they actually have like a restaurant they have like all her paraphernalia in the background or whatever it's actually a really nice little homage to a really really like that there was also in the first episode there was like a flashback scene uh where uh kev goes ahead and actually has a, a braided lace front just had me cracking up, I was just dying or whatever. Um, and then really, really for the prevalence of that first episode, you kind of get that whole feeling of the message there is just kind of being able to step out on faith. And you really kind of got that in the first episode. So the first one was a very nice little interview into the world that they really want you to go ahead and actually be a part of. So I like that. Um, in the second episode, they kind of immediately put a spin on it. So remember, we're going and actually talking about that, you know, he's going to go and actually pursue his own congregation his own ministry from the ground up and go and actually do that and the way that you think it's going to go in both the synopsis and the end of the first episode they put a spin on it in the beginning of the second episode and now there's a different dynamic in place so that that was like i like that in the second episode you see some counseling sessions and some house calls that are made and when i sit there and tell you i was cracking up through the majority of them i was because the situations the scenarios the conversations were just hilarious i loved it well, do you uh, even know what it is she's asking me to do i want my husband to close his eyes and with a given heart i want him to eat my amen um 
the woman who was playing granny in this episode she gets introduced in the second episode and she's absolutely hilarious loved her the mother jane character is absolutely uh the busybody that you want to have in a series like this she is to Corey's character what uh amelia and corsetta was to deacon deacon ernest's character in a man and if you have watched that you will know that they were antagonists and, and all that kind of stuff on there but it was good natured antagonist it wasn't like you know mean or anything like that but just busybody type of deal the there there's also a very good scene in there it was a nice little heartwarming uh, discussion that took place with between granny and and Corey's character in the second episode and i really like that kind of put a nice little bow on it as well as this conversation with uh the pastor of the other church or what have you so the, there was some nice tidbits in there in that second uh episode that really kind of gave you what this series could go ahead and actually be really about so those are my thoughts going in and watching those first two episodes breaking it down in there as far as the three things that i do is storytelling acting and intangibles so for the storytelling for me the most sitcom styles are very much mundane situations with like hilarious spins to them and this is no different they go ahead and actually do the same type of stuff on there the difference with churchy though is that they go ahead and actually they're not too stiff that they're afraid to go and actually tackle some of the issues and and subject matters that other faith-based comedies just are just a little too tenuous to go ahead and actually tackle and they want to do it in a more realistic way so while still is real subject matters that give you that bit of hilarity that you can go and actually laugh at it but you can see the relatability and i like that from the story setups on there pacing is really great from the aspect of getting to scene to scene to go ahead and actually really move the story along keep keep the laughs coming but then also getting through the plot so that you don't feel really tied down you can tell this is a series that's really made in the realm of not a not a traditional sitcom there's some traditional sitcom uh, tropes on there but mostly from a new modern audience of just kind of hitting the main plot points hitting hitting the story and pushing it forward and i think it's well paced for that now for me the one thing i wish i actually did do a little bit longer is that i think they kept the idea of the typical uh, sitcom minutes restriction on there seeing that it could go ahead and actually maybe be picked up by a network or whatever the case might be so there was that confinement i almost wish that each episode was like maybe 10 minutes longer or so so that they could go ahead and actually flesh out some characters a little bit more because i feel like they're very one-dimensional characters um except for Corey's character which obviously is a little bit more but even he doesn't get fully fleshed out or whatever at least in these first two episodes what have you so i almost feel like there should be a little bit more time to dive a little bit more into character development even with it being a sitcom type style but i love the modernization that this series gives using social media and its influence in the church scene and the fact that that's something that they can't ignore so for storytelling for me churchy is going to go ahead and actually get a b plus now in regards to acting you can go ahead and actually tell that Kevin on stage gave a lot of chances to people who wanted opportunities to get into the business whether you're talking about show business or acting or you know just trying to get uh, their name or their face out there or anything like that there are definitely some opportunities that were given which means that the level of performances is kind of up and down you know there are if i go ahead and actually call it out uh cory carr's character that came on stage his character is i love him it was, it was absolutely funny sandra dunce uh dunston franks as grandma was hilarious loved her character um also lexi allen as mother jean you can just tell is going to be that character uh that just hits that right kind of note of things everybody else and supporting characters or smaller parts or what have you it's kind of up and down some of them are funny in some scenes some not so much and then there's people that are coming in and out or whatever what i will say about the acting with this particular series is they are better as a cast meaning that you could tell that they actually had fun doing this that they wanted to be there and they were trying their best and that sometimes goes actually supersedes individual performances and you can kind of see that the casting aspect of it overall is something that was really uh well done for this so for me acting is going to be a c plus for churchy now, when I go ahead and actually talk about intangibles, it's always stuff that you can't quite go ahead and actually objectively measure, what have you, but there's just things that just go ahead and actually pop out in your head. Uh, for me, the modernization of the social media in uh, the church scene, really love that aspect of it. It really kind of speaks to me. The fact that they're not afraid to go and actually talk about various different topics, as I mentioned earlier, a lot of uh, faith-based comedies really kind of shy away from that stuff. They go and actually tackle it head on and they talk about it in a real way that they can go ahead and actually deal with it. I really like that. One of the things that I think for me prevailed in this is that you can tell if you watch it and look at it, you could see that this is a low 
budget production. But here's the, the kicker for it is that you wouldn't go ahead and actually notice it unless you were looking for it because the real draw is to the characters and the story and not so much, you know, where they're shooting it or production value, things like that. You're not going to see a lot of it because you're drawn into the story, what have you. The other aspect of it is that this is kind of like where you, where you go ahead and actually find people that it's great to go and actually have passionate people to work on projects because you could tell between you talking about the cameraman the sound the editing they were done in a very good way that somebody was brought on there to go and actually care about this project and to go and actually do it the right way so even though it's a lower budget type of project you never felt that and i really like that aspect from the series the last aspect of it for me again just an intangible thing on there but for me the churchy theme song is very catchy and i could see that go ahead and actually i'm gonna check and see if that's actually a whole song because the little bit that we go and actually get into like the intro and the, and, and the trailers and stuff like that i love that voice and that sound or whatever and i could go and actually be seeing that catch on so those are the So those are just kind of the intangibles, but from all that type of stuff and the vibes that I get from Churchy and things like that, I'm going to actually give the intangibles for it an A-. minus. Kind of concluding on everything on there is the reason why I told main audience members to go and actually watch the entire series is, you know, it's a very well paced season between the episodes of being only 25 minutes long, only eight episodes and everything just kind of moves along at a very brisk pace on there. It's really awesome. Uh, seeing church life reflected in a way that's modern, it's realistic. We'll go and actually keep church folks smiling you could go ahead and actually see them go and actually be like enjoying this type of series and then there's going to be people that you can relate to throughout that maybe aren't just the most you know christian or faith-based or anything like that but you're going to be able to relate to some of those folks on there and then kev on stage is a very likable dude him being the centerpiece of this is really going to be able to uh really speak to main member audiences and they're really gonna like it for casual viewers i'm gonna say watch the first two episodes because it really goes and actually two it's not a big time commitment you're roughly gonna go and actually be spending about 40 to 50 minutes to watch two episodes and get into it you're gonna be able to go and actually like the relatability you're gonna be able to go and actually get a sneak peek behind the curtain of uh, a christian faith type of product to see you know what does it go and actually look like? How do they feel, you know, in today's day and age, stuff like that? They keep the plot moving. They keep the laughs coming. It's there's passion and joy on there that a casual will go ahead and actually pick up on. And then you just really need to go ahead and actually find out if this type of comedy is for you. But I'm going to say give it that two episodes watch because you do need to go and actually work through the dynamic of the initial pilot. And then seeing, I think, what the episodes are going to be and what the project is going to be in episode two. So again, go ahead and actually tune in to Churchy on BET+. Plus. Check it out. Do yourself a favor. Yeah. Give God praise. Hallelujah. You're going to hell. Oh, well, no time to go back now. Amen. Thank you for sitting through this entire review. I enjoyed it. I hope you did, too. If you liked any part of this, do me a favor, click like, you know, even subscribe to the channel so I can go and actually do more for you. Um, or if you didn't like anything, feel free to go and actually leave a comment. I'm always open to feedback. Um, but if that's all that you have for me, you can go and actually watch one of these other videos that the algorithm thinks that you might like of mine. But until the next time, I'll holler at you. Take care of yourself.